The story begins on the grounds of a Florida County mansion. The father wanted his charming daughter to finally think about future prospects for marriage. Fortunately, the main character had no intention of being stubborn in this matter. However, for some reason, the parents expected to hear a refusal from the lips of their beloved daughter. The expressions on Daddy's and Mummy's faces clearly indicated that they did not expect to hear an affirmative answer. The girl had not yet cried so much, demonstrating a clear desire to reject the candidacy of the Duke of Belfort. Apparently, in the eyes of her loving parents, the main character seemed an incredibly capricious lady. However, Daddy and Mummy were right about something, since the girl spent all 22 years of her life in bed, citing poor health. The main character even missed her own debut. It is very difficult to lead an active lifestyle when you spend about 16 hours sleeping every day. The girl tried not to remember the past, since every memory made her feel even more disgusted with herself. The father believed that even despite the king's recommendations, his daughter should abandon this dubious undertaking. But the main character was very serious about becoming the legal wife of the Duke of Belfort. The parents could not hold back their tears of happiness because their daughter had finally become quite mature and independent. Previously, it seemed to Daddy and Mommy that their lazy child would become a completely hopeless person in the future. Sylvia Florette, the main character of this story, was the only daughter of Count Florette. The parents were ready to make any concessions in order to please their weak heiress. They bought her countless clothes and jewelry, but the girl was only concerned about her place to sleep. Disregarding the traditions of the nobility, Sylvia caused considerable mental discomfort to her concerned parents. The main character not only refused to go out into the fresh air, but also neglected meals. Every year, parents became more and more convinced that their child was special. It's scary to think who could take care of such an extravagant girl after the death of her parents. The parents felt that if not they, then no one else could provide maximum comfort for their daughter. It turns out that before leaving this mortal world, all that remained was to find a worthy husband for Sylvia Florette. The parents almost gave up due to the fact that for a long time they still could not find a suitable candidate. But fortunately, His Majesty recently proposed the Duke of Belfort as Sylvia's future husband. Now, loving parents, having fulfilled their destiny, could die with peace of mind. The main character remained the only person who continued to remain calm and indifferent. The Duchy of Belfort is a place where various monsters and demons appear quite often. The girl considered this not a piece of luck, since before she had not been able to find a good way to die. The unsuspecting parents continued to rejoice at their daughter's upcoming wedding. In order not to cause concern to Daddy and Mummy, the main character just smiled affectionately. Belfort has finally arrived. The guards could not stop rejoicing that their master had finally found a worthy wife. Everyone's favorite, Mr. Randall Belfort, finally gave his subordinates a reason to be happy. Flore's future husband felt very depressed about the upcoming ceremony. Randall Belfort, the second person after the crown prince who has the right to inherit the throne, demanded from the guards that they stop mocking him and constantly reminding him of marriage. The servants asked the master not to frown too much, as wrinkles spoiled his young face. The duke knew that until recently, Sylvia Flore had been categorically against their marriage. A few days ago, a meeting at the Elvers Palace. The Duke of Belfort was told that he should immediately think about marriage and procreation. The young man was lucky because Count Flore was just busy looking for a groom for his only daughter. Since Sylvia's family was distinguished by its long and rich history, the girl was ideal for the crown prince. From the ruler's reaction, it became obvious that he was completely indifferent to Randall's wishes and demands Belfora. It was just a simple coercion disguised as a friendly offer. The youth wanted to refuse, but since his territory bordered the demon land of Calvicia, the food supply could be cut off. It is better not to risk the lives of your loyal people by coming into conflict with His Majesty. Randall Belfort bowed respectfully and accepted the generous offer of the current ruler. The Duke's subordinates behaved as if they had no idea that their master was marrying against his own will. Surely the guards behaved this way because they sincerely wanted to cheer up their master. However, the young man was sometimes very worried about the familiar attitude of his subordinates. 
The Duke decided to teach the guards a lesson and conduct another strength training as punishment. Randall Belfort asked his subordinate if the magic circle leading to the capital was ready. Austin the magician of the Duchy of Belfort spent the whole night in order to achieve the desired result. Young man Awkward thanked the wizard and said that he would try to use the portal as quickly as possible. The Duke was counting on a pleasant acquaintance with his bride, but anxiety did not give him peace. Randall Belfort did not yet know whether the County of Florey could be counted among the supporters of the king. Moreover, the guy sincerely hoped that he would not have to liquidate his own wife. Further actions took place in the wedding hall of the Alvarez residence. The parents felt genuine concern about having to let their daughter go. Now Sylvia, who not so long ago was a little girl, has turned into an adult woman. Obviously, over the years, the young noblewoman continued to bloom like a heavenly spring flower. The parents promised that if the Duke or his family treated Sylvia poorly, she could return to her father's house at any time. Mommy and Daddy really felt a strong affection for their daughter. The main character said that she needed to hurry up and go to the ceremony hall as quickly as possible. If suddenly Sylvia is unlucky, she will be forced to live a long, happy life. The bride told Duke Randall Belfort that it is a great honor for her to meet him face to face. The main character should definitely pacify her thoughts, since now she will have to live her exactly 100th life. Throughout her long and grueling life, Alice was reborn exactly 99 times. In her first life, she was a ray of light, a great sorceress who stood up to the demons in the war. Everyone praised Alice for her valor and incredible fortitude, thanks to which she managed to achieve considerable results in the confrontation between good and evil. The girl heroically spent years of her life in order to protect innocent people. Then the young lady knew how to enjoy her existence and motivate herself for further victories. To completely eradicate the monsters, she devoted a lot of time to studying demonic power and researching the darkness. Thanks to the use of evil magic, the main character was able to open a portal to the other world. Alice felt immense happiness, so she shared her achievements with ordinary people. However, instead of expressing their gratitude, the pilgrims decided to push the girl into the gate leading to the demonic world. The main character sincerely did not understand why humanity decided to throw her out to be torn apart by monsters. The pilgrims were frightened because Alice's demonic power continued to increase every day. The abandoned girl spent many days thinking about why she had offended people. At the first possible opportunity, one of the bloodthirsty monsters tried to attack the defenseless Alice. Fortunately, thanks to her abilities and combat experience, the girl was able to win. Several years have passed since humanity first betrayed the main character of this story. Alice fought the demons alone and eventually reached their ruler basis. Having cut his throat, she ceased to be a person, but in return she had to reincarnate into a demon. In a fit of madness, Alice attacked the people who had so mercilessly abandoned her to the monsters. The human race was on the verge of extermination due to the fault of a maddened demoness. Suddenly, one of the bravest heroes named Cleon appeared in front of the main character. He used the magic of his holy sword to kill the villainous and save humanity. That day, the demon queen had to leave the mortal world, but this was only a temporary measure. Dying in agony, the main character continued to repeat how pathetic people are. Suddenly, the girl felt as if her defeated body had regained its former strength. The main character only remembered that not so long ago, she was forced to die at the hands of a man. A mysterious voice addressed the girl, calling her a fallen soul. Alice had taken the lives of many innocent people with the help of the forbidden power of darkness, so the mysterious creature was going to punish her in proportion to her sins. The idea was that the main character needs to live 99 different lives. However, even if the girl tried to commit suicide, she was never able to die of her own free will. By her 99th life, Alice was so tired that she had absolutely no strength left to continue to fight. The mysterious deity promised to increase the sentence if the girl tries to commit suicide this time. Now Sylvia had no choice but to accept the coming changes. Duke Randall Belfort immediately noticed that something strange was happening to his wife. He found it difficult to understand Lady Florey's emotions since they had never met in real life before. The main character said that they should not linger since the guests had been waiting for them for a long time. 
In the eyes of Duke Randall Belfort, Sylvia seemed very thin and petite. The groom did not intend to get closer to his wife, but he believed that she was worth fattening well. The girl also liked the young man because at first glance, he seemed quite calm and friendly. The official wedding ceremony between Randall has begun, Belfort and Sylvia Flore. Having completed all the formalities, the preacher finally declared them husband and wife. Now all that remained was to seal the marriage bond with kisses in order for the ceremony to be completed. The guy felt awkward because his partner was three years younger. Surely if the Duke kissed her now, the guards would continue to make fun of him. To avoid a real kiss, Randall Belfort decided to cover their faces with a bouquet. However, the main character sincerely believed that such deception was completely insufficient. Of course, the Duke did not expect such a revelation from his new wife. The girl approached her husband and then in front of all the guests gave him the sweetest kiss. This kiss was enough to create the impression of a real family idol. However, you should not overdo it since the deity is constantly watching his convict. The guests assumed that Sylvia was clearly not from this world, since it was impossible to be so beautiful. Those who spread dirty gossip about Lady Floret will not soon appear at such events. And even from her fiancé, the Duke of Belfort, not a single young lady could take her eyes off. The main character, who was clearly tired of dancing, could no longer wait for their wedding night to arrive. Meanwhile, the guy could not believe that his wife was 22 years old, since Sylvia looked mature enough for the daughter of a count. Randall Belfort felt slightly awkward not knowing how to address his wife. Fortunately, a very insightful girl resolved this issue by saying that she could be called by her name. Also, the main character allowed the Duke to call herself dear, wife, beloved, and other tender words. Apparently, the guy was attracting too much attention with his worried expression. Duke Randall Belfort confirmed that he is also not a supporter of any formalities in married life. This young man must have been a very good person if he reacted so gently when such questions arose. Unexpectedly, during one of the dances, a young maid approached Mrs. Sylvia. Since quite a lot of time had passed since the start of the festive banquet, the bride had to change her outfit. Duke Randall Belfort decided that while he had free time, he needed to greet his wife's parents. In the end, the guy wanted to become better acquainted with the ways of the Floret family. The young master also promised that he would try his best to create conditions so that Sylvia would never need anything and would feel free in her new home. The parents were amazed at how attentive their daughter's husband was. The Duke added that before leaving for the Belfort estate, he would like to ask a few questions. The father of the main character began to intuitively feel some concern. The guy wanted to find out whether his wife for 22 years of her life had never left the aisles of her own estate. Mommy and Daddy were clearly embarrassed to talk about the routine of their only daughter. However, the Duke continued to insist that he would like to know everything in order to find a common language with his wife. The parents driven into a corner reported their daughter's reluctance to leave her own chambers. Sylvia is naturally very lethargic, so sometimes she can sleep for days on end. The Duke decided that his wife needed to go outside at least once a day. Austin notified his master that the magic circle was fully ready for his return home. Randall Belford informed his wife that in this case, they were ready to hit the road. At this moment, the main character's husband looked like an incredibly sweet and sincere person. Duke Randall gave the order to his subordinates for the last time that they were leaving. The riders began to gradually disappear among the rays of magical blue light. The main character was even ashamed that her husband turned out to be so kind. This means that after the death of Sylvia Florette, Randall will be able to find a new party without any effort. Only after some time did the girl realize that she was far from her home. The main character could no longer wait until she could finally lie down in bed and take a break from the loud ceremonies. However, today we need to give it our all so that the deity does not have any doubts. The first wedding night between Sylvia and her husband Duke Randall is coming Belfort. The young Duke asked his magician why his face looked so downcast. Austin was unhappy, because this time the portal turned out much worse than last time. Suddenly, the Duke ordered his servant to create a barrier covering the entire forest. Randall ordered his wife to close the windows and not to reveal her presence under any circumstances. 
The guards who were experienced in navigating the local forests immediately sensed the presence of otherworldly creatures. A monster that looked like a giant werewolf instantly jumped out of the thickets. Duke Randall Belfort ordered the guards to protect the carriage at the cost of their own lives. With every second, more and more pirates appeared from the forest wanting to feast on human flesh. This is the first time that this type of monster decided to attack travelers in these lands. The Duke was sincerely sorry for his wife, who on the first day of leaving her home was forced to meet bloodthirsty demons. The trembling maid asked the indifferent mistress what they should do in this case. Geoffrey, a knight of the Duchy of Belfort killed a large number of monsters in this unequal battle. However, this young man was no match for the Duke who killed about ten monsters in a matter of seconds. Suddenly, the knight noticed two small human children right behind him. It seemed very strange that the children randomly ended up on the bloody battlefield. Geoffrey ordered the two little boys to run out of the forest immediately. The unfortunate children were so frightened by what was happening that they could not even run away. The brave knight vowed to do everything possible to protect the children. The main character realized that now there was a very good chance for accidental death. The bloodthirsty monster immediately rushed towards the unarmed girl. However, with the help of the powers of black magic, the main character was able to set the monsters against each other. The worried Duke Randall immediately rushed to the aid of his reckless wife. The main character was fine, but she was worried about the condition of the knight who was trying to help the lost children. The wounded knight Geoffrey began to bleed very heavily. Austin asked guards to turn the young man over so he could be given emergency medical care more easily. Noticing the concern on the Duke's face, the main the heroine took his hand for comfort. The girl was 100% sure that Jeffrey would remain alive after this incident. Therefore, so that no one else suffers because of the demons, we must hurry to the estate as quickly as possible. Luckily, after a little treatment, Jeffrey looked like he was in good health from the start. It is worth expressing gratitude to Austin, since he spent his last magical powers in order to create a teleportation circle. The main character was sincerely glad that Knight Jeffrey's health had improved. From that day on, the girl could again simultaneously use magic and the powers of darkness. When the monster ran towards Sylvia, she was completely ready to say goodbye to her life. However, it is absolutely unforgivable to die such a terrible death in front of innocent children. Moreover, in such a difficult situation, Duke Randall was sincerely worried about his wife. Seeing the corpse of his torn to pieces, wife would be a big psychological blow for the guy. It's good that Austin stood far away, and thanks to this he could not feel the presence of magic. We had to be careful because now Sylvia was a simple person unable to use magic. The maid told her masters that they needed to go out as they were now expected. Butler Wilcott and head maid Delma warmly greeted the new mistress. The well-trained servants bowed their heads obediently before their new mistress. The Duke felt awkward because the servants, instead of meeting them in the hall of the mansion, went down to the infirmary. The main character showed a gentle smile to the servants and loudly introduced herself. The maid was incredibly happy that a mistress would finally appear in this estate. Sylvia Belfort inherited the chambers of the previous duchess of this family. A huge portrait hung right on the wall depicting Rendall's parents. Sylvia's husband was indeed very similar to his father and mother. The main character remembered that she once met these people in one of her past lives. Due to constant rebirths, the villagers chased the girl, considering her a monster. Suddenly, the main character noticed a young couple who were fighting dangerous dragons. The girl informed the strangers that if they went to the east, they would be able to reach the central road. Despite their modest attire, their refined manners betrayed high origin. It is very ironic that her husband was a child whose parents' lives she saved in a previous life. The tired noblewoman decided to take a bath before going to bed. The maids prepared aromatic oil, especially for the girl, which is rare in these parts. The main character, being a lover of relaxation, was delighted with such procedures. The maids believed that their new mistress looked so excellent that she could easily be confused with a deity. Ordinary girls could only dream of living at least one day with such an appearance.
The main character hoped that today's first wedding night would pass very quickly and without unnecessary incidents. If Duke Randall turns out to be a pervert in bed, then the girl will have to take his life. Sylvia expected the copulation to take about 60 minutes in total. The main character calmly entered the chambers of her husband, Count Rendall Belfora. The girl noted that her marriage partner had a very attractive and toned body. However, before going to bed, the Duke wanted to discuss something with his wife. Sylvia invited the young man to sit closer to her. It was obvious from the Duke's face that he felt very awkward next to the scantily clad girl. Randall wanted to leave his wife alone today, as she had been through a lot today. It is better not to rush the events of the first wedding night until tremulous feelings arise between them. The guy was about to share his thoughts, but the girl unexpectedly interrupted him. The Duke, who was not ready for such manifestations of passion, began to resist in every possible way. The main character said that while she was slowly undressing, Randall could continue talking. From the very beginning, Sylvia seriously set herself up to fulfill her marital duty. For some reason, the Duke believed that the girl was not doing this of her own free will. Sylvia did not force herself since she considered sexual intercourse to be her main responsibility. But Duke Randall believed that the girl did not feel any sympathy for him. However, the main character was almost 100% sure of her desires and goals. Unable to bear the excessive insistence, the Duke asked the girl to stop embarrassing him with her poses. Guy began to plaintively beg his partner to leave him alone. Hearing the men's pleas, the main character experienced considerable excitement. Sylvia was seduced for a split second by the man's sexy appearance. Since the main character had no choice, she still decided to get off her victim. However, instead of getting to her feet, the girl suddenly fell on her husband's chest. The Duke suggested that this condition could be caused by today's shock. Surely the noblewoman's mind was clouded after all today's stressful situations. The frightened Randall was about to call the servants for help, but he suddenly heard a very strange sound. It turned out that in fact the main character simply fell asleep as was originally planned by her dubious daily routine. The Duke decided to carefully move to one side since his wife was lying too uncomfortable. Randall was absolutely sure that he would definitely not be able to sleep that night. As expected, the girl woke up the next day without any consequences to her fragile health. The main character, who did not remember anything at all, suggested that yesterday they did a good job in fulfilling their main marital duty. The Duke angrily asked his wife to move to the side and let him get out of bed. Sylvia was genuinely afraid that last night she might have accidentally attacked an innocent guy. Obviously, Randall had to learn a lot of interesting things about his chosen one. Since the girl was very exhausted yesterday, the Duke asked her to prepare only the healthiest dishes with which she can quickly restore her energy. The young master also sent out all the servants for the comfort of his other half. It seemed to the girl that in order to deserve such a luxurious dinner, she needed to please her husband. Randall's generosity today, Belfora seemed absolutely amazing. At home, the main character ate only once a day, let alone three meals a day. It seemed to the girl as if they were looking at her with the eyes of a concerned grandmother who desperately wanted to fatten her only grandson. The main character felt out of place because they failed to resolve the most important issue. The Duke was very interested to know what thoughts filled Sylvia's head. However, the guy was very upset when the girl started talking about choosing a new date for their wedding night. Randall once again repeated that he does not intend to do this without the consent of his partner. In this case, the girl will have to get used to the nickname, the Duchess who could not fulfill her marital duty. Fortunately in the North, there are no such frivolous people chattering left and right. The Duke was a good man, but this did not change the fact that he behaved like a naive child. Alice was betrayed by the very people she dedicated her life to saving. Surely the common people will speak foul language about the Duchess who recently entered a new family and did not fulfill her main duty on her wedding night. Randell needs to grow up in order to say goodbye to his childish views. The main character decided that in the current circumstances, she needed to act as directly and clearly as possible. Sometimes you have to resort to serious deceptions since the deity will not let you say goodbye to life easily. Sylvia, with a smile on her face, asked her husband if he would like to make a deal. The girl said that if the Duke cannot spend his wedding night with a person for whom he feels nothing, then they need to try to love each other. 
Obviously, in such a situation, this arrangement would be the best solution. Sylvia said that for starters, they need to constantly touch each other in order to get used to touching. The Duke asked his wife which part of the body she would like to touch. The girl with excitement in her eyes said that first she would like to hold hands. Fortunately, Randall Belfort saw no reason to refuse this proposal. Sylvia asked her husband if he wanted something that she could bring to life. The guy with a smile on his face pushed a plate with unknown contents towards the girl and asked her to eat. It was a specialty of the Belfort family and had many beneficial properties. Even after finishing breakfast, the young Duke continued to laugh and gloat at the girl. He loved how defenseless Sylvia looked at that moment when he tried to shove that disgusting dish into himself. It seemed surprising that such an unshakable person could be defeated with food. Surely the girl wanted to take the Duke's hand because of his unapproachable behavior. Even if it was an arranged marriage, he still wouldn't dare to refuse his wife. Moreover, it will be very easy for the Duke to keep an eye on Sylvia, who may turn out to be a spy for the king. However, the guy felt ashamed because of all the suspicions arising in his mind. Randall notified his wife that the vassals should arrive in exactly four days. It is then that the first official meeting will take place at which the young couple will be present together. Since the vassals were very loyal comrades, they wanted to meet the Duke's newly made wife as quickly as possible. The main character shouldn't bother, since there will be many more, much more important banquets in their lives. Such events did not cause fear in the girl since she had done this in her previous lives. Despite her reluctance, the main character promised to do everything in her power. Randall left his wife for a while because now he had to take care of government affairs. Smiling slyly, the girl wished good luck to her other half. The young master went to one of the villages of the Duchy of Belfort. Randell decided to meet the children who were recently discovered in the forest. The Duke asked the children to play only in those places where a protective seal had been applied. One of the boys admitted that they usually do not enter the territory of the demonic forest. The guys went into the forest to find medicinal herbs that their parents traded. The boy said that mom and dad have been very upset lately, as magical plants are starting to gradually disappear from their usual locations. The joyful children said goodbye to the Duke and then went to their home. It turns out that in the forest next to the village, the herb garden on which a huge number of villagers survive is gradually being destroyed. Apparently, the reason for this was monsters since the knights deal with all wild animals. However, a security seal has been installed around the perimeter of the village for many years. The Duke decided that he needed to see for himself what was happening in order to draw some conclusions. Randall ordered the knights not to let their guard down until they were sure that the protective barrier was working. You should always be on alert as it may turn out that monsters are secretly living in this forest. Since ordinary people began to come here much less often, even the surrounding area became gloomy. Fortunately, the knights were never able to detect signs or traces of any evil spirits. Four out of five places are normal, so the guards only have to check the last area. The Duke asked his subordinates to prepare for the fact that they could now meet dangerous monsters on their way. Suddenly, the protective stone of the forest cracked right in the middle. Immediately after this, the insidious snake rushed at the knights who momentarily lost their vigilance. The main character drank some tea and then noticed that a small crack had formed right on her cup. A few hours later, the Duke dealt with almost all the attacking monsters. This time, the guards escaped with only minor injuries which can be quickly treated in the infirmary. The cut on the security crystal turned out to be too smooth. Monsters with low intelligence levels would not be able to leave such a clear crack behind them. And even if a demon appeared in such a place, Austin's barrier would definitely react. It turns out that this whole mess was a consequence of the use of forbidden dark magic. Only the most inhuman creatures are willing to do something like this for their own benefit. Randall ordered the knights to prepare lists of everyone entering each individual territory of the duchy, as well as those leaving from here. The main character's tea party was interrupted as the head maid Delma unexpectedly called her. Even despite all her internal reluctance, Sylvia still agreed to meet with her. It turned out that the maid wanted to give a short tour and show off the banquet hall of the main palace. Like most castles in the Empire, this castle was also sponsored by the previous emperor due to the fact that the duke belonged to royal blood. 
It is thanks to the financial support of His Majesty that the castle has such a beautiful view. Delma said that she called a person from the Trade Guild to decorate the banquet hall. The main character was also going to deal with this issue, but she was too lazy before. Sylvia, along with her servants, came into the living room of the Belfort family estate. Cherville Trade Guild Chick Getla at first glance seemed to be a very unpleasant person. Without giving it away, the girl greeted her guest with a calm expression on her face. The man was surprised, since the Duke's newly made wife turned out to be very beautiful. However, the head of the trade guild mistakenly thought that his new client was an ordinary simpleton who could easily be scammed out of a large sum of money. Chick Wetla has prepared some new items for Duchess Sylvia Belfort. The girl who had many years of experience behind her began to carefully examine the materials provided. The main character quickly came to the conclusion that the quality of the goods was quite good. Delma asked the head of the trade guild at what price he was willing to provide the materials. Taking into account the Duchess's main requests, the man began to calculate the exact cost. It turns out that the head of the trade guild, Chick Getla, was hoping to receive 30 gold pieces. Delma worriedly told the lady that the amount mentioned exceeded more than half the monthly income of the Duchy of Belfort. Since most of the finances go to help those who have suffered from monsters and demons, it is not surprising that their financial situation leaves much to be desired. The headmaid asked the head of the trade guild if he could lower the cost. The man began to be indignant that it was very difficult for him to get from the north to their duchy. Moreover, the head of the trade guild had just announced a price with a very large concession. Delma said that in this case they have no choice but to apply for a loan. However, the main character was not going to waste the ducal savings so easily. The girl who had been in similar situations before her marriage immediately guessed that Chick Getla was trying to sell the materials at exorbitant prices because they were no longer relevant in the capital. The man began to be indignant because all the goods provided were part of the new collection. The main character warned that if the fact of a lie was suddenly revealed, the head of the trading company would thus turn the Florette and Belfort family against himself. Moreover, for disrespecting Sylvia Chick, Getla would have suffered punishment tantamount to insulting the imperial family. The Duchess was about to sign the contract, but the head of the trade guild unexpectedly stopped her. The noblewoman, with a sly expression on her face, asked her victim if he was all right. The maids felt triumphant, as the head of the trade guild agreed to sell everything for 15 gold pieces. Hearing about what had happened, Duke Randall felt rather proud of his wife. The guy wanted to thank Sylvia, but Delma said that the mistress had fallen asleep not long ago. A Duke Belfort tried to do everything as carefully as possible so as not to wake his wife. However, Randall continued to feel as if Sylvia was trying to hide something from him. It's hard to believe that such an experienced and intelligent girl never left her home. Suddenly, the guy felt his wife trying to discreetly touch his chest. Apparently, the Duke liked to immediately get down to the main task without any prelude. The main character was annoyed that Randall refused in every possible way to fulfill his marital duty. The guy just pressed the girl to his chest and asked her to forget about all the intimate details for today. Many servants have recently begun to notice that their master is behaving too strangely. When Duke Randall smiled, he looked very much like a cheerful dog. The guy was worried that his happiness was becoming more and more noticeable to those around him each time. Remembering what happened in the morning, Duke Randall Belfort could hardly contain his laughter. The young master promised the girl that if she had breakfast, she would be allowed to take his hands. Noticing the indifference on Sylvia's face, the Duke began to gradually increase his rates. The main character swore that this night she would repay her dear husband in full. Perhaps because of her youth, the girl does not yet realize the whole essence of her wedding night. Austin scolded his master for acting so careless lately. He should be more careful about his wife, who may turn out to be a spy for the king. Randall asked the court magician to watch his language in future and not allow himself to make such statements about the Duchess. The young master decided to change the topic of conversation and ask Austin if he would like to change the formula of the barrier stone. The magician agreed that they needed to create a stronger barrier that could stop all the monsters. 
Austin promised to give 100% if he received financial support from the Duke. This man was ready to do anything in order to earn extra money. The tired girl could no longer wait until she had the opportunity to lie down in bed. The main character had to try on a huge number of dresses for the upcoming banquet. It was lucky that Sylvia dealt with this unpleasant issue quickly enough. Suddenly, the girl noticed a court magician lying on the ground right in front of her. Of course, Delma began to reprimand Austin, who behaved so obscenely in the presence of the Duchess. The man began to protest because a person like him would not lie around anywhere. The headmaid awkwardly told her mistress that she had better leave so as not to witness obvious lewdness. However, before she left Sylvia, Belfort wanted to take care of some matters in the garden. The fact is that this place had ideal lighting temperature and humidity. The garden was perfect for the girl's light afternoon nap. Sylvia said that she wanted to stop here and rest a little before lunch. According to the court magician Austin, the young lady could turn out to be a spy for His Majesty. We must be as careful as possible so as not to find out all the Duchess's secrets. The main character noticed that while planning the protective barrier, Austin took into account the formula that she had once created while in Alice's body. Sylvia tried not to bother herself with unnecessary thoughts, since the affairs of the Duke's magician should in no way arouse her interest. However, Austin did his best to attract attention by saying that he was unable to draw the formula the first time. The girl did not want to reveal her identity, helping all the servants and subordinates of the Duke. The main character decided to stop the magician, since if the new barrier is restored, she will not be able to die safely. In addition, Sylvia's father was Honorary Deputy Dean of the Elvira's Academy. Despite the fact that the girl did not study in magical schools, she still knew something. To begin with, the main character decided to familiarize herself with the formulas prescribed by Austin. The magic materials were so mediocre that Sylvia didn't even need to interfere. According to Delma, Austin was the next person after Alice worthy of the title of Great Wizard. However, the young man had to study a lot more in order to get even a little closer to the level of the main character. Out of pity, the main character nevertheless decided to correct the mistakes of the unlucky wizard. The concerned magician immediately snatched the paper with the corrections from the hands of Duchess Sylvia. In order to avoid unnecessary questions, the girl decided to leave the garden as quickly as possible. The main character also asked Austin to keep their conversation today a secret. The magician absolutely could not believe that the Duchess had unraveled such a complex formula without any effort. From now on, Austin will never again suspect Lady Sylvia of royal espionage. The main character quietly disappeared to the sounds of enthusiastic cries of the court wizard. Duke Randall Belfort was finishing up his preparations for today's banquet. Today the young master looked much more elegant than on ordinary days. Randall could no longer wait until he had the opportunity to see his beloved. On today's significant day, the lady of the estate looked simply magnificent. The girl looked so beautiful that the servants could not stop admiring her beauty. The main character felt like a doll that was dressed up by inspired children. Sylvia had to hurry as the Duke was already waiting for her near the entrance to the chambers. The girl awkwardly apologized to Randall for having to wait so long. The nobleman was even speechless at how charming his wife was. The main character joked that she could meet her partner in this dress at night. The Duke thanked all the guests for their presence and introduced his wife to them. From now on, Sylvia Florette Belfort became the official mistress of this beautiful estate. Obviously, only such a beautiful girl could become a good match for the Duke. However, not all the guests present supported the alliance between the Florette and Belfort families. Randall greeted Marquis Sarkin, whom he had not been able to see for so long. The Duke asked the nobleman if Lady Philia had come with him. However, the girl who went south for the war did not even intend to return home. From a very early age, she behaved like a little tomboy. There are rumors among the people that the war in the south of the state is gradually coming to an end. The main character calmly watched from the sidelines the actions of her dear husband. Usually the higher the knowledge, the more the most ordinary person begins to become arrogant. However, Rendall could easily find a common language with both a nobleman and an unremarkable commoner. This is what all honorable people should strive for absolute equality between all members of society. 
That is why the girl wanted to fulfill her duty as quickly as possible and disappear from his life. It is impossible for his piercing gaze to read Sylvia's deep thoughts. Suddenly, a mysterious girl named Rubea approached the main character, Glover. Obviously, this lady was holding back with all her might not to say something rude. The main character saw right through people from this base category. They demonstrate their unprecedented devotion, which subsequently blinds them, and they begin to go against the will of the master. With the naked eye, one could notice that Rubea Glover disliked the duke's wife. The impudent woman asked the lady if she could ask her one very immodest question. Rubea wanted to know if Sylvia understood what an opportunity the North missed because of her marriage to Randall. Now during a terrible war, Duke Belfort needs support more than ever. And getting married is a great way to gain additional connections and power. However, the main character's family is sincerely devoted to the imperial couple. It is difficult to understand how Sylvia could provide assistance to the Northern Territories. According to Rubai Glover, the place where the main character sits should belong to another lady who can become a strong support for the political affairs of the Duke. The envious woman hoped that Randall's current wife would understand everything perfectly and retreat giving her place to someone else. In Rubea's eyes, her rival now looked completely dumbfounded and intimidated. Surely the opinion of the guests will instantly deteriorate if they see the weak side of the mistress of the house. Rubia Glover couldn't wait for Sylvia Floret's collapse to happen, Belfort. However, instead of expressing any indignation, the young lady only showed her indifference to other people's opinions. It is very arrogant to believe that after Roubaix's loud words, something can change. Suddenly, the envious girl experienced a strange feeling, somewhat similar to deja vu. If Roubaix was not satisfied with the current Duchess of Belfort, then she could present her grievances to the Emperor. It is very cowardly to criticize Sylvia since this marriage was not concluded by her decision. The main character was incredibly bored starting arguments with such stupid people. Suddenly, the guests at the welcome banquet noticed a suspicious red glow appearing above their heads. A huge monster similar to a kraken appeared right in the middle of the ducal castle. Randall immediately rushed to his wife to protect her from the sudden attack. The frightened nobleman desperately shouted to the girl to run away from the monster and save her life. However, the main character was in no hurry at all, because she finally had a chance to die. But the grumpy guest was not going to leave her rival in the clutches of a terrible monster. Rubia Glover screamed at Sylvia to run to safety as quickly as possible. Suddenly a huge monster appeared right behind the brave girl. The main character feeling condescending tried to cover Rubea with her body. The girl wounded in the back fell helplessly to the floor. After being severely wounded, Sylvia randomly found herself in a completely different place. This was Alice's very first life, mercilessly killed by embittered people. The girl with a gentle smile on her face tried to find out the name of the boy who sat next to her. The young man indifferently uttered one word, Cleon. Hearing the familiar name, the main character was very surprised. The main character refused to believe that this charming boy could turn out to be a ruthless warrior. The girl who had once suffered from Cleon simply refused to hear and understand him. The young man thanked the stranger for so heroically saving him from a dangerous monster. After this day, the boy followed Alice and began to carry out small errands in the camp. But could this charming child really turn out to be the same knight Cleon? Fortunately, the main character never died after being attacked by a giant monster. The main character felt as if her head was about to explode from pain and constant dizziness. It was Cleon who was the person who dared to kill the defenseless Queen of Demons. Lost in thoughts about the past, the girl heard a familiar voice calling out to her. All this time, while the main character could not wake up, her husband was nearby. Randall worriedly asked the girl if she had any pain after the incident. Only now did Sylvia remember how she tried to save another person at the cost of her life. Austin healed the wound, but the main character had a very long road to full recovery. The worried girl rose from the bed to examine her husband's face. Now, after waking up, Sylvia could only worry about the Duke's well-being. Apparently, while the girl was in a coma, her husband spilled a lot of words. Each time this man left the main character completely confused. Duke Randall Belfort increasingly behaved like a devoted dog ready to do anything for his beloved owner. 
With his piercing gaze, the nobleman looked into the soul of the abandoned girl. The main character began to hesitate whether she should say goodbye to her life so quickly. The girl, overwhelmed with emotions, called her husband closer to her. Sylvia wanted the charming duke to give her the burning warmth of his body. The noblewoman said this without any perverted thoughts, since she really was very cold. It seemed as if the relationship between these two had finally reached a new level. Arandal added that after destroying the mysterious monster, he was forced to send a letter to Count Floret. The parents had every right to know in detail what happened to their only daughter. Sylvia did not appreciate this act, since she did not want to bother her mom and dad again. The Duke fortunately dissuaded the Floret family from a long trip, since the protective barrier created by Austin still had many serious flaws. The main character did not want to tire herself out with unnecessary meetings with her relatives. However, as an alternative, the Duke could offer his wife teleportation to the lands of the Floret family. The girl will not have to overexert herself once again if she gets to her home in just a few seconds. Sylvia did not understand at all why such a strange idea came to her husband's head. The fact is that since the North was too dangerous, it was completely unsuitable for a quiet life. It was for this reason that Duke Randall intended to send his wife back to Floray. Less than a few days after the wedding, the Duke already wants to send his wife away. Seeing Randall's face, the girl immediately realized how difficult this decision was for him. However, the main character did not have the slightest desire to move away from her death. The girl could not so easily allow a stranger to control her destiny. A such a decision could greatly damage the reputation of Duchess Sylvia. The Duke tried to assure the girl that no one would even dare to insult or ridicule her. Moreover, as a dominatrix, the main character has to deal with certain obligations. At this moment, the owner of the duchy must show severity and show who is the real master here. We must be much more serious since even shadow worms were able to penetrate to the north. Over the past few days, the duke had suspected his own wife of being a spy. If he had shown even a little vigilance, Sylvia would not have had to suffer. So the decision he made at the moment is obviously the most correct. Of Belfort had recently become her home. The main character liked the North, and therefore she did not intend to leave it so easily. The girl really liked Delma Austin and the rest of the residents of her new home, and most importantly Sylvia felt a strong attachment to her husband. The main character tried to make her words sound as sincere as possible. The Duke sincerely thanked his wife for her trust as well as sincere devotion. Randall also apologized to Sylvia for daring to decide her fate so brazenly. Belfort can be very stubborn in moments of need. The guy told his beloved to rest until the doctor came to her. Fortunately, Duke Randall turned out to be far from the most hopeless person in Sylvia's life. The nobleman was worried that with his revelations he could scare off his dear wife. He needed to get his act together as there were still a lot of unresolved problems. For the first time in his life, the gentleman witnessed brutal bloodshed in his own domain. The Duke wanted to know who dared to bring the teleportation stone to his banquet hall. Randall threatened that if the culprit did not confess, they would not only kill him, but also send the culprit's family to the scaffold. No one living today had absolutely no right to attack Sylvia Belfort. Rubea fearfully admitted that the teleportation stone was attached to the hem of her dress. The magical attribute was attached to the robe, along with a small ribbon. The girl hoped that the information she said could turn out to be a very important clue in the investigation. When the monster appeared in the banquet hall to stop the bleeding of the duchess who sacrificed her life, Rubai Glover tore off a piece of her robe. It was at that moment that the girl noticed that a teleportation stone had fallen next to her. However, arriving in a state of shock, the noblewoman did not attach much importance to this. The girl demonstrated a small thing that was a method of teleportation. Following the testimony of the daughter of the Marquis of Gleaver, the Duke took a closer look at her recent activities. And suddenly one of the vassals pointed to a young servant working in Belfort Castle. The unknown man demanded that this boy be immediately sent to prison. Fearing the Duke's wrath, the vassal did not immediately admit that the servant had been taken into custody. As a matter of fact, the young guy was brutally executed without any investigation. However, right before his death, the young man said several words that are direct evidence of his guilt. 
The servant could not refuse this idea since the unknown man promised him a huge sum if the order was completed in accordance with all requirements. There remains the possibility that the stranger the young man met could be one of the shadow worms. It is necessary to take all necessary measures as quickly as possible to ensure that this never happens again. Uh, the maids could not stop rejoicing that their mistress was now in good health. The servants prayed day and night for the Duchess to recover from the attack. The main character decided to imitate weakness so that her subordinates would not have unnecessary suspicions. The maids also reported that they had prepared something very interesting for their mistress. Sylvia was very concerned that the servants should not overdo their creativity. As it turned out, the maids prepared a special set of healthy meals for the Duchess. The girl understood that she only had to refuse to eat for the torment to end. However, for some mysterious reason, Sylvia could not express her dissatisfaction with the maids. Many of the servants were in high spirits when the Duchess devoured her breakfast with such a strong appetite. Delma asked the hostess to wear warmer clothes since severe cold was gradually setting in in this region. For some reason, the girl was not informed that the daughter of the Marquise of Glever provided her with first aid. Apparently, in emergency situations, Rubea did not allow her emotions to get the better of her. However, the Marquise's daughter behaved very strangely during the attack of the giant monster. When the main character fell into the arms of Roubaix, she heard strange comments from the mouth of the Marquis. The father was categorically against his daughter being involved in saving the Duchess. The man told the girl that they urgently needed to run away because then it would be too late. After recently awakening, a bad feeling raged in the heart of the main character. Rubea came straight to Sylvia Glover, who provided her with first emergency aid. The Marquise's daughter was sincerely glad that the Duchess was now in good health. The main character was going to thank her savior since without her help she could have died. Rubea's face showed that she was trying to overcome her own indecision. The embarrassed daughter of the Marquis of Gleaver also wanted to say something to her savior. She was truly grateful for the rescue that the Duchess of Flore provided her Belfort. The main character did not at all expect that such an impudent girl would feel guilty about what was happening. Feeling shy, Rubea used acceleration magic to hide from prying eyes as quickly as possible. The self-confident noblewoman must have been very embarrassed in connection with recent events. The main character told Delma that she would like to ask one question. Sylvia wanted to know whether the Marquis of Glever was really on close terms with Randall. The head maid confirmed with a smile on her face that the words spoken were absolutely true. The Duchess immediately suspected the Marquis who wished her death at the time of the monster attack. Delma knew some information, although she did not want to admit it. To better understand the situation between the Glever and Belfort families, it is necessary to recall one story that happened about several decades ago. In those years, a struggle for the throne was brewing in the palace, but the two princes, filled with brotherly feelings, did not want to conflict over this issue. The young man told the future king that he would not want to become an obstacle in his path. With each passing day, passions in high society became more and more intense, reaching their final peak. Therefore, one of the brothers wanted to offer one very successful alternative that could solve their problem. The prince decided to go to the northern lands to finally settle there and build his future life. However, his brother did not think it was worth going that far to fight for the power of the aristocracy. The devastated north more than ever needed a reliable hand capable of changing something. Having made an important decision for themselves, the two loving brothers hugged each other tightly before moving away forever. This is how the second prince turned out to be from his surname Lochran and took the surname Belfort, settling in the northern lands. He was the father of the current Duke of Randall Elvis Belfort. First of all, the noblemen united all possible families scattered throughout the north. However, now unfortunately the previous owners of the duchy have long been dead. When Randall was very young, his parents died while confronting a dangerous monster. The aristocrats believed that the son of the dead was too young to occupy an important position. Those present wanted to select the ideal candidate as quickly as possible, because the North needed a powerful ruler and not some young weakling. Obviously, the nobles took into account exclusively their own benefit. 
And one day, an event occurred after which the opinion of the aristocrats changed dramatically. The palace servants were horrified when they saw the bloodied young master in front of them. The boy showed those present part of the body of the monster he had killed today. Randall did this because he wanted to appear useful in the eyes of the aristocrats. Immediately after these words, the wounded child fell to the ground. After the incident became public ordinary, people began to sympathize with the young master. In the end, the emperor who feared him recognized the succession and awarded the title of duke. The Marquis of Gleaver was the man who led and united the aristocrats of the north. It seemed to the main character that thanks to his flexible nature, her husband lived a calm and measured life. Sylvia thanked the headmaid for providing important information. Surely Randall will be shocked if he finds out that Marquis Glever is somehow connected with the Shadow Worms? The girl had long been accustomed to this kind of thing, so she would not have been surprised to witness betrayal. However, Randall was a completely different, more trusting person. This stupid man did not understand many things in his short life, unlike Sylvia. Surely if the main character tells everything, he will feel disappointed. Sylvia called her husband over with a wide smile on her face. Not long ago, a guy promised that he would spend this night in an embrace with his beloved. The girl invited her husband to jump into her bed as quickly as possible. The embarrassed guy hoped that such intimacy would be quite enough for the insatiable noblewoman. Immediately after these words, the main character attacked her shy victim. However, seeing the scars on the guy's body, the girl quickly calmed down. Obviously, Randall had to go through a lot of suffering. Some people have to prove their usefulness in order not to lose their place in this world. The Duke, who understood what was happening, tried to calm his beloved. He didn't want the girl to worry about other people's scars. However, in the depths of his soul, Randall was pleased since he understood that this anxiety was caused by sincere affection. The court magician had to check about ten places where the protective stones were located. The Duke sheepishly told his subordinate that he would like to discuss something with him. Austin Standard's one minute of his free time is considered a gold coin. Scrubbing his soul, Randall nevertheless decided to say goodbye to the money and share his own thoughts. The Duke began to tell a fictitious story that he had one friend a girl who was interested only in physical contact and not emotional intimacy. This lady constantly acted as if she was only interested in the outer shell of her partner. Austin asked if the Duke's friend truly loved his significant other. However, if this person were not in love, it is unlikely that he would be interested in such issues. It was at this moment that the Duke realized that he was sincerely in love with his newly made wife. Like a ripe tomato, Randall began to turn every possible shade of red. The young Duke was always glad that the girl was sincerely worried about his condition. However, the guy was very saddened by the intimate concern of his insatiable partner. Every little thing in Sylvia's life began to excite Duke Randall's heart, Belfora. For the first time in his entire life, the nobleman was finally able to know what true love is. Most of all, the guy in love did not want to force Sylvia to any manifestations of feelings. Austin suggested that the Duke's friend could attract the lady's attention with an expensive gift. This is a very win-win option since all people love to receive material signs of attention. However, the Duke had a negative attitude towards people who had money first. The court magician concluded that a person in love needs to somehow express his feelings. A man needs to take care of his beloved in every possible way to be nearby no matter what. Only under such conditions will a girl want to get not only the body but also the soul of her partner. The Duke agreed that Austin's words were not without deep meaning. Randall should try as hard as possible since it is very easy to get a girl's heart. Oddly enough, after complete recovery, the main character wished to meet her savior. Although the weather was quite good, Sylvia unfortunately was unable to find suitable company for herself. Rubea Glover, who was unexpectedly taken by surprise, tried to politely get rid of the Duchess. It turns out that saving each other's lives did not mean that they would be able to become friends. After such words, Rubai definitely had no choice but to accept the invitation. The main character thanked the Marquise's daughter for agreeing to accompany her. Rubea tried to discuss what happened at the banquet, but suddenly someone distracted her. The fishmonger, who was very familiar with the daughter of the Marquis, began to invite girls to his counter. 
The embarrassed girl asked her commoner acquaintances to treat her with respect. The merchants asked to treat Rubea, who finding a free moment very often came to visit them. Previously, it seemed to Sylvia that her interlocutor did not like to visit such hectic and restless places. However, Rubea Glover, as an aristocrat, was responsible for the northern lands and their inhabitants. The main character continued to voice humorous mockery of the embarrassed girl. Feeling a little guilty, Sylvia decided to apologize to the girl for her jokes. The Duchess told the Marquise's daughter that she would like to give a small pendant in the shape of a butterfly. Despite her inner joy, Rubea initially tried to refuse the offered gift. However, a few minutes later, the Marquise's daughter calmly thanked the Duchess and accepted the beautiful gift. Despite her hot temper deep down, Rubea was a very sweet and sincere girl. Before heading home, the main character suggested that her friend visit a few more interesting places. Only at the very end of the walk did the Marquise's daughter find the courage to ask her companion a question of interest. The curious girl wanted to know why Sylvia wanted to spend time with her. The main character asked Rubea Glover, does she remember the words she said at the banquet? The Marquise's daughter recalled the incident when she accused the Duke's wife of her incompetence. Sylvia agreed and said that to this day the North remains an unsolved mystery for her. The girl sincerely wished that Rubea Glover helped her explore new territories. Obviously in this situation it would be much wiser to take the side of Sylvia Belfort. Wanting to get straight to the point, the main character accidentally mentioned the Marquis of Gleaver. Rubea must be very close to her father if he rushed to her so quickly during the monster's attack. After death, expensive spouse's marquee on one's own was studying education his daughters. Even despite discontent from the aristocratic society, Sir Glever taught Ruby archery. The girl was absolutely sure that her father was a very warm and friendly person. It is unlikely that the marquee acts together with his daughter since it seems as if Rubea considers her parent an ideal of holiness. If it were not for the Marquis of Gleaver, it would be very difficult for the current Archduke to take his title. Having come to her senses, the young lady began to accuse Sylvia of using seduction tricks. The main character answered her friend that she herself without outside help was tempted by her appearance. Of course, Rubercia was very unpleasant to listen to such nonsense in her direction. Suddenly, one of the guards noticed how a man ran up to the court carriage. Sylvia and Glover were also very surprised when they recognized the person who had arrived to them. It turned out that Rundle, having listened to Austin's advice, decided to give his wife small gifts. The main character was extremely discouraged by the appearance of her partner and his toy duck. The fact is that inside the soft gift, there was a stone of warmth that could save the girl from cold nights. The court magician, who did not expect such a result, began to feel a strong sense of guilt before the Duchess. The guard could not believe that the man who rules the entire North would do such meaningless things. From the expression on Sylvia's face, it seemed as if what had happened was that she was planning to file for divorce. The girl suggested that with his gesture, the Duke demonstrated his reluctance to sleep with her in his arms at night. Obviously, a man's reluctance to show intimacy could become a big problem in their relationship. Sylvia just laughed and thanked her partner for the flowers and the charming gift. The Duke, who gave happiness to the person closest to him, sighed with relief and ordered the guards to prepare the carriage. Ruby's happy lover's Glover felt quite disappointed. The daughter of the Marquis hoped to the last that she would still be able to carry out her plan. The girl wanted to take the place of the Duchess of Belfort in order to improve the position of her family. However, now Rubea realized that she was not able to defeat such a strong rival. You cannot win the heart of someone who looks at his beloved with such joyful eyes. Every year, the day before the start of the hunting tournament, a luxurious celebration takes place at the Belfort Palace. The event is held in order to improve the morale of the participants in the upcoming competition. Only now the main character showed absolute indifference to the noise happening. She was only worried that Randall had been acting strangely lately. After that situation and the toy duck, the Duke began to constantly give strange gifts. For example, this time he decided to give his beloved a tree, the decoction of which is very good for health. The main character sincerely hoped that this nightmare would come to an end very soon. 
However, Randall did not understand the hints at all, so he continued to give strange, inappropriate gifts. The next day, yesterday's situation unfortunately repeated itself again. With each passing day, spontaneous gifts became more extravagant. Sylvia tried to react to such antics very straightforwardly so that the Duke would finally realize his mistake. The nobleman said that if you place this jade turtle near the marital bed, the relationship between a man and a woman will improve significantly. The next day, Duke Randall Belfort also did not appear empty-handed, but with a new gift. It seemed to the main character as if her chambers were gradually turning into a warehouse of unnecessary things. However, the longer this chaos continued, the more difficult it was for the girl to refuse her husband. Sylvia realized that recently her marriage partner's feelings had become sincere. The girl was completely unprepared for the Duke's passionate displays of feelings. The main character insisted on intimacy between them only for the sake of embodying the wedding night. If Randall really fell in love, then it will be very difficult for him to start life anew after the death of his only wife, to whom he managed to become so closely attached. Each time more and more problems appeared in the girl's life that needed serious solutions. Nerubea Glover sincerely did not understand why Sylvia was sharing details of her intimate life with her. The main character thought that they were close enough to have such conversations that revealed personal details. In fact, the Duchess never had real friends who could listen or offer sincere advice. Rubia said that she would much rather prepare for the hunting tournament than continue to listen to the boasts from the lips of the Duchess of Flora Belfort. Before she left, the daughter of the Marquis urgently asked not to pursue her and to give her peace. However, the main character unexpectedly blocked the passage of a girl who wanted to leave the estate. Sylvia carefully straightened the bow of her hasty interlocutor. Every day, Rubea became convinced that the Duchess was getting on her nerves more and more. The Marquise's daughter tried with all her might to concentrate on the hunt and not think about stupid things. In order to find a more or less worthy goal, you need to go even deeper into the dense forest. Suddenly, right among the trees, the girl noticed her own father, who in theory should now be in a completely different place. Before, Rubea had no idea that Marquis Gleaver was interested in hunting. However, next to the girl's father, there was another very suspicious person. The partners were busy discussing an event that had recently occurred at the banquet. Rubea Glover realized that her father's interlocutor was none other than an otherworldly demon. The girl did not understand why a member of her family was in the presence of their main enemy. The daughter of the Marquis was even afraid to imagine that her father could be involved in the recent tragedy that occurred during the ducal banquet. The man wanted the demon to certainly fulfill his business promise. The fact is that Marquis Glever wanted to kill Randall and then take his rightful place as ruler of the Northern Lands. People chasing honor and glory become very stupid at the moment of their vulnerability. Rubea began to think about killing the demon since in this case the evil spirits would take the sins of her greedy father with them to the grave. Moreover, to this day, communication with a demon is considered a very serious and unforgivable crime for a person. Perhaps the girl will still be able to reduce the severity of the future punishment intended for her dear father. However, the cunning demon immediately noticed the presence of a stranger. An otherworldly creature appeared right behind the frightened daughter of the Marquis of Gleaver. Several years ago, a demon named Calgi Calgi Rayfold managed to defeat his main enemy. He was very weak but thoughtlessly ran to attack Randall after all the other demons. All the monsters either died or ran away in fear to a safer place back into the darkness. The demon promised to take revenge next time and tear the face of the current duke to shreds. After these words, the representative disappeared for some time, although later he decided to repeat his attack. Each time, the persistent demon continued to shamefully lose to an ordinary person. Things got to the point where even children from nearby villages began to tell tales about a certain Calgi Calgi Rayfold. It turned out that because of his plans, the unlucky demon had not appeared in public at all for a month. The Marquise's daughter suggested that they could try to escape and get to the people. However, the insidious demon was not going to let go of the girl who overheard his personal conversation so easily. 
The father could not believe that all this time his daughter had been closely following his conversation. The Marquis grabbed the child by the hand and told his otherworldly business partner about his departure. The girl managed to escape this time, but confusion continued to trouble her heart. Rubea hoped to the last that by his actions her father only wanted to lure the demon into a dangerous trap. But the man who committed one of the most terrible crimes remained silent. With tears in her eyes, the girl asked her father if he was aware of his terrible actions. The Marquis ordered Rubé to close his mouth and not interfere with his thinking.